object to describe it. About its size, color, shape. <laughs> right, all of those things, size, color, shape, etc. And then another one down here is it's like but. So if it's similar to a certain item, we can say it's like this, but it's different because of da 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 da. da. Okay. So for example, if I had this item right here. Oops. Okay. And on the left hand side we see some ways to describe it. It looks like it's made out of, you use it to. So if you couldn't remember this word, what are some things that you could say to describe it? It looks like sweater, but it is, uh, I don't know how to say this part of uh, uh, that we should wear over our head. OK, excellent. Great. And that's a great example of um, circumlocution, just what Ksenia? Sorry if I'm pronouncing yes. your name wrong. Yes, um, what, Ksenia. Ksenia? What she mentioned. So she said, I don't know the name of this, but it's something that you wear over your head. So this is like a sweater with a part that you wear over your head. Does anyone know what the part that you wear over your head is called? Hood. A hood. Excellent, Andrew. Right. So it's like a sweater, but with a hood. And does anyone know? Uh, it's like a hoodie, yes. <laughs> right, hoodie. <laughs> right, because the words are on here. Right, by accident. Right, so it's a hoodie. But just like you said, it's, um, you know, it's, it's like a sweater, but it has a hood. Excellent. Okay, what about, so we'll just do a couple of these to practice. And then later on, I have a game that practices describing different objects. Okay, so the next one. Okay, so are you familiar with this product? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And then, um, so how could we describe this product? It's kind of a strange product, isn't it? Any it, ideas? It is a bottle with a liquid which used to correct mistakes on the paper. Excellent, right. It's a bottle with a liquid um, that's used to correct mistakes on paper. That's an excellent description. Okay. And um, so do you all have this in your country, this um, kind of uh, product? I have, but it's a different shape. Is in a different shape? Um, yes, it is like a pen. Oh, like a pen. I think I have one, actually. Let me check. Um, is it like... Like this right here? Yes, yes, like, like this. Out, like, okay, very cool. Right, we, these aren't very common in the United States, but it's more common to have the liquid rather than in a pen. But that's an excellent description. So, for example, if you went to the store and you didn't know the name for Whiteout, which is the name of that product, you can say, well, I'm looking for a liquid that's used to correct mistakes on paper. Can you show me where it is? Okay, so you guys can see that this is a useful tool um, in conversation so that the other person still can understand what you're talking about. What about this one right here? Oops, sorry guys, one second. Some technical difficulties. <laughs> What about this product right here? How could we describe this? Um, it's used to remember you something, to, to remind you something. Great, excellent. Excellent, Fernando. So it's um, used to um, remind you of something. So you write on it so you don't forget something. It's used to remind you of something. Um, can you think of anything else? We use it for making some notes. Do we use it for making notes? Um, what else is special about it? It's paper, but what makes it special? It, it sticks. It sticks, right. Very good, Andrew. So we can also describe what an object does. Okay, so this paper is special because it sticks. 
So this is very useful if you're going to the store and you're looking for something specific like this and you can't remember the name. Um, has that ever happened to you? Have you gone to another country? Um, any of any of you that a country that speaks English? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And has that ever happened to you where you are looking for something and you can't remember the name? I think it's every day in my trip. I for I forgot a million words and I <laughs> don't know how to say it. So I use description. Uh -huh. Excellent. Right. So like Ksenia said, um, it happens every day. <laughs> and um, what country did you visit, Ksenia? I visit USA. Uh-huh. Very nice. Um, what state? State? I visit a different state. For example, uh, Washington, D.C., Virginia, California, and many others. Oh, wow. So you've been to a lot of them. Yes. Great. I'm sorry? You've been to a lot of states then. Yes. Right. And so sometimes that happens where you forget a word, but like you said, you're able to talk around it so that um, so that you can still be understood. Um, Fernando, have you ever been to an English-speaking country? Uh, uh, so so it could be because I've been I have never been directly inside the United States. I just have passed through the airports. I mean, uh, I I made a change of plane, of, <laughs> of airplane in the airports to go to a, to another place. But yeah, I've been I I have to I have had use uh, English in other countries, not necessarily English is uh, English spoken countries. I think it's you say that that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So like in, in countries where English is the first language, you can say. Um, so you've been to other countries that um, that speak English, but not as a first language. But you use English to communicate, right? Yes. Excellent. And um, let's see. I, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, Anatoly, is that how you say yeah. your name? Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, I use it uh, uh, during the classes, online classes, uh, mm -hmm. constantly. Um, when I forgot uh, how we call this thing, uh, I, I uh, tried to describe it using different words. Right, excellent. And Another usually, word. usually, a uh, teacher uh, understood and uh, uh, correct me and uh, gi uh, gave a right uh, title, right name. Mm -hmm. Right. So usually you could the the teacher understood, and then he told you the vocabulary word like, oh, that's called a uh, post-it note or um, whiteout. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. So this is a very um, good skill to have. It's important to know vocabulary, but sometimes you have to talk around things to um, to understand them. Um, what about this one? I don't. Let me see if I can erase these really fast. Um, one second. Let me erase the words so you guys can't see them. <laughs> and then, um, Anatoly, have you ever been to an English-speaking country? Yes, uh, I was uh, in the United States and uh, a very short time in the UK. Oh, very nice. So the United States and the UK. Um, and when you were in the United States, um, what states did you visit? Did you visit the same states as Ksenia? I uh, was in uh, New York City, or uh, I visited also Philadelphia, Atlantic City, uh, Albany. It is the capital city of uh, state New York. Uh, mm -hmm. That's all. And Washington DC, yes. Oh, very nice. <laughs> right, so you guys have been to a lot of um, a lot of states. It seems like I think you have been to more states than I have, and I'm from the United States, <laughs> but. Um, let's see. Right, so to practice um, a few more words with the strategy, I think you guys have it down pretty well. It seems like you already use the strategy a lot um, in your English classes or um, when you're uh, visiting a, an English-speaking country. Um, do you know what, let's see, um, what this is called, any of you? I know. 
You know, Andrew? Yep. Okay. Um, the rest of you, if you, let's see, Andrew, could you, um, since you know the word, um, could you help describe it to other people? How would you describe this if you didn't know the word? Uh, it is a thing which used to plug in some devices, whereas, so, it usually allows electricity to go through into the device. Okay, excellent. Right, it's, um, it's a, a place where you plug in your electronics, and it allows electricity to go into the devices. And in your country, um, do you use the same? Oh, and Andrew, what is the word for this? Do any of you know, other than Andrew? No one. Andrew, could you tell us what it is? Uh, it is pocket or outlet. Outlet, right? That's the word that we use a lot in um, in the United States. Is outlet. And um, in your countries, are the outlets same? Or are they different than the outlets in the United States? They look different. Mm -hmm. And the different what? Yes. They have. It, it is uh, it. Mine have uh, round holes. Okay, so they have round holes, and um, let's see. And then Ksenia, you said they were different in your country as well. well yes, you, you have the one hundred and ten watt, but we have two hundred and twenty watt. Okay. A volt? I don't know how to... <laughs> um, voltage is the way that we... Voltage. Mm. Voltage. Okay. Right, so the, the voltage is different. I can write that out for you guys. Voltage. Right, so the um, the outlets are different depending on the voltage. And then in Fernando, are the outlets in El Salvador the same or different? Well, uh, no, uh, here in El Salvador, it looks the same as the picture. Oh, that's good. So if I go yeah. to El Salvador, then I can just use all of my electronics and I don't have to worry. <laughs> Definitely. Very nice. Right. So this is an outlet. Okay. And then there are a couple more items that we can practice with. Um, what about these ones right here? Let's see, do you guys know what these are? Because these are kind of items that are... Um, around the house or items that you might find frequently in, uh, in an English-speaking country. So those are the things that I tried to pick for this activity. Any ideas on what these are? It is, it, it, is, it looks like a pen, but uh, it isn't a pen. If you leave it open, it will dry out. Okay, excellent. Right, so it looks like Usually, a pen. Yes, it uh, could be used to doodle something. Okay, excellent. Right, and that's a very good, um, I like that verb too, Andrew, doodle. Doodle is like when you draw, but kind of just um, without thinking of anything. It's just as, uh, just drawing for fun. Right, so very good. And um, these actually have a specific name. Do you guys, they're a type of marker, but do you know what kind of marker they are? What the name is? Highlighter. It's actually Marker. not a highlighter. That's a good guess, Andrew. A highlighter um, is something that's very similar. Um, could you guys describe, do you know what a highlighter is? Let's see. Um, this is a highlighter right here. It's like a marker, but it, um, let's see, but you use it to, um, to mark certain things on a paper that you want to stand out. So it's a little bit different, but do you have any idea what type of um, of marker uh, these are? Like whiteboard markers. Okay, that's one way to put it, Andrew, whiteboard markers. Or does anyone know another name to call them by? To, to use it on the flip charts. Okay, right, Andrew, you can use them on um, flip charts or um, whiteboards. Um, we call these dry erase markers. Dry erase. And um, why do you think we call them dry erase? 
you can raise it with the special glow. Without water. Right, exactly. Right. You can erase it without water. You don't need any kind of um, liquid to erase it. Okay. And we'll do just one more. Let's see. Um, Let's see. Let's try. Let's try this one right here. I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with this. Um, do you know what this is? Is it used uh, during the winter? It is right. Very really good, Andrew. It's used during the winter. Uh, yeah, I, I have this type of this thing in my car. Okay, very good. Right, so you have it in your car. Um, Fernando, yep. do you know what this is? I think people from Russia might know, but um, in Latin America, you I don't think you need this. I mean, no, I, actually, I don't know exactly what it is. I mean, I have never used one of those here, so I think. I mean, I don't know if it's just exclusive for maybe the ice something or, or something like that. I'm not sure, but uh, I mean, here, I think we don't have it from those. Okay, very good, right, so it's used, um, you're actually right, Fernando, it's used to um, de-ice something, like you said, or um, can any of the people from uh, from Russia explain it a little bit more? Um, Anatoly? Mm. We can use it for uh, cleaning uh, the window of the car. Okay, we can use it to clean the window, or uh, yeah, to clean the um, we could say the windshield or the windows of the car. Um, anything else? Andrew or uh, Ksenia? We use it in the winter season. Uh, remove the eyes from our window in the car, maybe. Yes. Right, excellent. So we use it in the winter um, to remove ice from the car. And do you know what it's called? Scraper. Very, very good. And um, it's actually, the full name is called an ice scraper. Ice scraper. Right, an ice scraper. So if you weren't sure what this was called, you could talk around it like you guys did. Um, so, for example, if you were talking to Fernando and you were saying, well, we use this thing, it's called an ice scraper, and he might not know what it is. And so you just you say, okay, well, we use it during the winter to... Um, to take ice off of the windshield of the car. Okay, so very good. Excellent. Okay. And um, in Russia, do you use these a lot? A lot. Yes. <laughs> I imagine. Um, and let's see. Um, and where in, in Russia, where can you buy an ice scraper? I think we can buy it everywhere, in our supermarket, in a gas station, everywhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's very common tools for our car. <laughs> very good. Right? It's very common. Um, I think in the United States we can buy them at usually gas stations or, or other buildings that sell um, things for cars. Right? So, yes, I imagine that in Russia you use them a lot because... Um, it's very cold, right? And very many and very and a lot of snow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So right. we should use it every day. Oh right. So um, how many months does it snow in Russia? I think it's uh, depend on year. In one mm -hmm. year we have for. For example, four months with snow, but other we have only three and six. It depends on year. It's not um, a rule of snow. It depend on, depends on. Right, so it depends on the year. And um, that's kind of how it is in the United States as well, that it depends on, um, it depends on the year. Sometimes we get more snow than other years. Um, and uh, do you like the the snow, um, Anatoly or Andrew? Mm, yes, uh, it's uh, cool, and uh, uh, we can uh, go on the skies, 
on the uh, and uh, use other different uh, uh, sport activity during uh, the winter. Okay. And uh, also it is uh, um, uh, children usually uh, are very glad uh, to make from snow snowmen uh -huh. etc. That's good. Great. Uh, by, by the way I, I can show a picture uh, with a snow which I uh, took just uh, two hours ago you can see on my screen. Oh! <laughs> uh, lots of snow on the Moscow River. Oh wow that's very beautiful. Let's go. See, because um, right now we have snow in um, where I live in Ohio, in the northern part of the United States, but it's starting to melt. So we don't need to use our ice scrapers, which is very good, <laughs> because it takes a very long time to um, use the ice scraper on the car to take off all of the ice. But like you said, you like winter. Um, even though you have to use your ice scraper and drive in the snow because of um, the winter activities that you do. Um, and um, what are some of the activities that you do when you're um, in winter? If you don't know the names, could you describe them and talk around them? Mm, other activity. Mm. Uh, riding on the uh, it is it's similar to roller, but uh, we uh, can uh, go on that, use it uh, uh, when we are uh, on the ice. Okay, very good. There, that was a really good way of um, a good circumlocution. So it's like rollerblading, but you do it on ice. Um, can any of you describe what it is? Ice skating. Very, very good, Andrew. So, ice skating. Um, what are some other uh, winter sports that you enjoy? Skiing. Skiing. Just uh, lying in the snow. Just laying in the snow. <laughs> Do you get cold when you're laying in the snow? Uh, after throwing some snowballs in at each other. <laughs> So you like to throw snowballs at each other and then lay in the snow. <laughs> that sounds fun, actually. Um, and then what is it called? I'll use some circumlocution to see if you guys can think of the word. Um, what is it called when you have a, a, a plastic, hmm, it's kind of hard, have a plastic um, object that you sit on in the snow and you go down a hill? Do you know what? Right, very good, Ksenia. Right, sledding. Um, do any of you go sledding in the winter? Uh, in childhood, yes. <laughs> so but in your childhood, and now that you're an adult, Ksenia, do you still go sledding or no? No, right now I'm not sledding. Yes, sledding. Right, you can say, um, now I don't go sled We usually say go sledding. Um, go sledding. We just say go with the, with the verb. So I don't go sledding. Yes, I don't know because I'm now I'm a friend. I'm afraid of it, but in childhood no fear. <laughs> so I I did it. <laughs> yes. And um Ksenia, why are you afraid of sledding? Because when we are growing up and we became an adult, we start to afraid of something and it's one of I afraid of to break some uh, part of my body, <laughs> so right. it's very yeah scared me. <laughs> right. So you're afraid of going sledding and then breaking um, a bone, like breaking your arm yes. or your arm. yes. Right, that's very true. Right, when we are children, um, we're usually not afraid of things like we are when we are adults, right? <laughs> yes, that's very good, guys. Um, and then. So I think you guys understand the strategy pretty well, um, but uh, have you heard of the game Catchphrase? No. No. No, I haven't. No. Okay, so Catchphrase is a game where it's, it's kind of like charades, but you can speak. So one person is given a word, 
and they have to um, talk around the word without saying the word and without saying any part of the word. So for example, if my word was baseball bat, I couldn't say you use it to play baseball because I'm saying a part of the word. So you, you describe the word that you have, but you can't say the word. And when your partner um, guesses the word, you get a point. So do you understand? Yes. Yes? OK, so, um, so I have a game of catchphrase that we can play. And let me start my screen share with you guys. Oops, sorry. Um, let's see. Actually, let me see. One second, guys. Sorry, there are some te technical difficulties. Um, let's see. Okay, can you guys see this screen? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so we can have two teams. Um, who wants to be on whose team? Any two people who want to be together? Uh, you can divide us. <laughs> I can divide you. Okay, so let's say, um, let's go with Ksenia and Andrew. You guys can be on a team. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. it does. Okay, and um, Fernando and Anatoly. Okay. Okay, okay guys. Okay, so are you ready? Yes. Yes. So what we do is, um, this is catchphrase, and we can choose the category. So we can do easy, medium, hard, or we can do other categories like cooking or household items. Okay, so each team will have one minute, and we'll take turns. So for example, the first round, um, let's just say, for example, Kisenia can describe the word and then Andrew will guess the word. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can see the word, the, wo the words. You can't see the words? Yeah. Monday? Oh, right. This one right here. Can you, s can everyone else see the words? Yes, I can, but uh, how could I guess if I, if I'm able to see on the screen? Oh, right. Good. <laughs> right, I forgot. <laughs> uh, good point. Um, right. Um, let's see. You, you can send the private message. Let's see. Let me check and see. Right, because I was going to just have you close your eyes, <laughs> but um, <laughs> because it, because it, I'm still learning how to use um, Google Hangouts as well. Um, so I don't I don't know. We could trust you and see if um, you could close your eyes because I still have to learn how to send the private messages. But. Um, Right. So, for example, one person like um, Ksenia would describe the words, and Andrew, you would just close your eyes or look away from the computer and um, try to guess the words. And we would try to guess as many in one minute as we can. And then okay. the other team would have a turn. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what category do you want to try? Do you want to do easy, medium, hard? Maybe medium. Medium? Does that sound mm -hmm. good to everyone else? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's yes? try. Okay. All right. So the first team is uh, Ksenia and Andrew. Okay. So um, who wants to describe the words for the first round? Maybe I. Okay. So okay. Um, Ksenia. All right, so um, so we'll I'll time for one minute, and we'll see how many words you can guess. Sorry, right, so Andrew, you're gonna guess. Are you ready? And Andrew okay. couldn't see the word, yes? Um, right. Oh, we'll, okay. we'll say Andrew will close his eyes. <laughs> okay. Because, right. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. I'm ready. Okay. All right. Ready. Set. Go. Let's see. It takes a little bit to load. Do you know this word? It's uh, direction opposite up. 
down. Down. This is actually a little bit different. I'll explain that in a second. But okay, so down. Yes. Okay. So what about this one? Uh, we use it to uh, smoke kalyan, and it is a long uh, tools from cold to our mouse. Tube pipe. Yes. Right. Very good. <laughs> okay. Uh, we uh, it's a place to work, but not forest. Not what? But not forest. We used to go for for a walk there, but not forest. Park. Yes. Okay, very good. Well, this one's kind of hard. We'll try it. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> um. How about this one? We use it to. Uh, we use it on our letter. It uh, consists of uh, numbers. Ah, no. It's, um, uh, it's a part of road, but uh, for, um, um, for people. Um, could you be more specific? It's part of road, but for people. Uh, pavement. Sidewalk. Sidewalk. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, we'll stop there, guys. So that was four, I think. It's a good job. All right, so let me. Um, oops. So very good, guys. That was four. And um, one of the things was um, let's see. Do you guys know the difference between gone and down? I know. Down. Down. It is like in the morning when the sign is is about to ri rise. Right, excellent. So dawn is um, in the morning when the sun is about to rise. Yeah. And, um, right, they look very similar, dawn and uh, down. Um, and then down, uh, Ksen uh, Ksenia, what did you say down was? Opposite up. Right, opposite of up, that's a direction. Right, so those okay. are two words. Mm -hmm. So you should say opposite of sunset. Yes. Right, well, um, Kind of. We could also say that the opposite of a sunset is a sunrise. Um, we would say the opposite of dawn would be dusk. Ah, uh, dusk. Um, have you heard of dawn and dusk? Have you? Has um, anyone heard of that word before? Yes, I've heard. Heard of it, right? Because dawn is the period when the sun is rising. So right, um, right after a sunrise. And then dusk is the period of day when the sun is setting. Okay. So very good. And then, um, let's see. And then, uh, Fernando and Anatoly, are you ready for your round? Yes? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yes. okay, and um, Anatoly and uh, Fernando, which one of you wants to describe first? Uh, I can. Okay. All right, so Fernando, you'll do the describing. I'll put this on screen share. I, I close uh, the window. Okay, yeah, <laughs> close the window or close your eyes. Right, I trust that you won't cheat. <laughs> okay, so um, are you ready, guys? Yes. Okay, so on your mark, get set, go. Oh, that, let's try this one. Okay, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me see. Okay, you use it to attach paper or documents. It's a little, it's a metal object. Mm. I, I uh, guessed, uh, but I'm not sure about uh, name. It is uh, like stick. I, I think it is not stick. No, it's not stick. It's made. It's a metal object used to attach paper or documents. Uh, usually, yes. Uh, it's a, the object is attached with a little, like, well, it, it's a little metal piece that that attaches the the, the, the documents. And uh, I'm describing like the machine that puts that little that little metal object uh, during the paper. Uh -huh. Do you know uh, the step, stapler? 
People are experts. Yes, you got it. <laughs> I have, we have the same uh, word in my, our native language. Oh, so it's the same word in Russian then. Okay, so uh, it's uh, it's the the mother is is the mother of your mother. My grandmother. Right, grandmother, or grandma. Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so do you want a new word, uh, Fernando? Uh, I'm not sure about that word. I mean, I don't know what the, what that word means. Okay, um, let's try this one. Okay, okay. This is use. I mean, you you use this to cover your house inside and outside to protect it to protect it against the sun or the weather? Hmm. Uh, special paper, uh, plastic. Uh, also, almost. It's, it's, a, it's a liquid material used to cover your house, your, the walls of your house. Uh, I don't know uh, how uh, we can call it. Okay. Um, we'll stop right there, guys, for for you guys. Right, that's kind of a hard word. It, um, Fernanda, do you want to share what word it was? Yeah, the paint. Paint. Right. Paint. So that that was very good descriptions, though. Um, a liquid material that you use to cover your house um, and cover the inside and the outside of your house. But sometimes it's really hard to describe the word without saying it, isn't it? Yeah. Right, because I see the word, I'm like, oh, you use this to paint. Ah, oh, wait, I can't say that. <laughs> yes. This is very good. So you guys got, I think that was two or one that you guys got. Two. Two. Okay. So very good. Those are very good descriptions, Fernando. Good job. Okay. And so we'll do it one more time, um, two minutes each. Um, but this time, the the person who described is now going to guess. So, for example, now, Andrew, you're going to describe the objects, and Ksenia is going to guess. Okay. Okay. Are you ready, Andrew? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, I am. Oops. All right. So, all right, ready, set, go. It is uh, on the tops of your fingers. You usually paint it with different colors. Nail. It is uh, the way to make a cake. You put it uh, cook. in all. Yes, another. It is like uh, cook, bake. But yes. Excellent. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, I don't. Uh, let's skip it. Skip it? Okay. Yep. Uh, it is a guy who you call when uh, you have your pipes uh, leaking. Pipe it leaking? fixes. Uh, leaking. Mm, I forgot it. <laughs> I forgot it. I know, but I forgot it. Okay. Let's okay. Skip it. We can skip that one. Um, you have a day, you are wearing a nice dress. And your future husband gives you a ring. A which ring? What kind of ring? Mm, bride, groom ring, wedding uh, ring. No, yes. Okay, excellent wedding yes. ring. Uh, it is uh, a long walk uh, which connects two banks, two shores. You two can drive on it. Sorry? Estacada? Uh, no, it connects to uh, the river and over it um, goes... Bridge. Bridge, excellent. Yes. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Uh, you put it in your car and now it, because of it our national currency is getting, getting lower. Gas? No. The price of is reduced, has been reduced recently. Oil? Great, excellent. Yes. Good. Okay, so that was, um, how many did you guys get right? I think it was, let's see, one, two, three, four. Did you guys um, count how many was correct? 
About five? Oh, okay. I think you're right. It was a lot. <laughs> I think it was five. All right. So very good. Some good descriptions. Like um, the the person who comes to your house to fix your pipes. Um, what was that one? It's a plumber, yeah. Plumber. Right. Yeah. A plumber. Hot tub. It is uh, like in the bathroom. Um, sometimes a, a hot a tub is in the bathroom. But a hot tub is a special type of tub that um, gets very hot and ha sometimes has bubbles, and you use it to relax. Um, so oh, okay. Right. I, I thought it was something different, but it is what I thought. Right. <laughs> right. So it's like a jacuzzi where um, the water is very hot and you get in it to relax. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, we had plumber, um, jacuzzi, or sorry, hot tub. Um, I think those were oh, and uh, oil was the last one, right? So, um, like Andrew said, it's something that you put in your car. Um, it's something that is very important to Russia's economy, right? Yes. But the price, right? It was a price price, so it's definitely oil. <laughs> right, and that that's something that has been in the news a lot recently in the United States as well, is how um how oil has dropped, um, right. gas prices. But that um, it's very difficult for Russia because much of their economy is built on oil. And due to uh, the fact our national currency devalued. A lot. Right. Right. So the national currency is um, devalued because of the the drop in oil. Correct. Yep. Mhm. Mm right. So, um, but good descriptions, guys. Those are good. Um, and then the last round. We'll do um, Fernando and Anatoly, but Anatoly, you'll do the describing, okay? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Okay, I will look to the other side. I mean, right. I, if, I, if I'm in this way or this way, are you able to listen to me? Right, so yeah, so just listen and close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so are you ready, Anatoly? Okay, all right, so. All right, so we'll have two minutes. All right, mm -hmm. so ready, set, go. Uh, that one's kind of, let's try this one. Mm, it is a term in which we use for relieve when uh, water uh, move from one side to uh, other side. A kind of flow or river? Uh, in a river. Um, we can use it not only for river, uh, for other uh, general direction. It starts with S. Uh, let's see. Let's try a different one, Anatoly. What about um, this one? Uh, we can uh, see it on the uh, our wall. Uh, a mirror. You, uh, you know, it it demonstrates uh, us, uh, for example, uh, famous actors. Uh, uh, a picture or a paint. Uh, it it. I paint it, uh, or uh, it could be photo. It starts with uh, letter P. A poster. Yes. Poster, very good. Oh, we just talked about this one. Uh, I I mentioned uh, this object when I described my uh, uh, photo when when we talk about uh, uh, winter activity in Russia for children, uh, what they uh, could do. Are uh, they uh, to ski? Uh, uh, they, uh, it, it looks like uh, uh, people, like person. Uh, but ah, it may to build, to build like, uh, I, 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 I don't know how to say, but when you build a figure on the snow, I don't know. Yes, 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 right. you're right. Okay, Snowman. Right. <laughs> right, Snowman, very good, but very good. Uh, it is a this might be a little bit easier. It is uh, one of the uh, most uh, commonly used uh, currency in the world. Could you repeat that one? I couldn't hear it. Uh, it is a currency which uh, uses uh, most of in, uh, uh, widely in the world. It says one of the currencies that's used most widely in the world. A dollar? Yes. Oh, excellent. Very good. Okay. So we'll stop uh, there. Good job, guys.
Okay, so very good. Um, I think okay. Xenia and Andrew got the, the most points, so good job. But all of you guys did a really good job describing your objects. Sometimes it can be really hard um, when you can't use the words like snowman, you know, to describe a snowman without saying snow and man. <laughs> yes, it's a great game. I love it. <laughs> Do you like the game? Yes. Yes. Because um, when I taught English, I taught English in Chile, and I really like this game because it, it shows you that you can describe words that you don't know. Because um, yeah. sometimes you feel afraid when you don't know a word or you get nervous. Of course. Of course, yes. right. Right, and um, Anatoly and Andrew, do you, how do you feel sometimes when you forget a word? Do you feel nervous or...? Mm, yes, yes. Also, mm -hmm. right. So I, I, I don't feel feel nervous. Sometimes I even can uh, forget a word in my own language. So right, exactly. Right. So sometimes you can forget a word in your own language. That happens to me too. Um, so sometimes you even have to use circumlocution or talking around a word in your first language because you can't remember a word. Um, but like I was saying, I like this game because it shows you that. Um, you know, you don't have to be afraid when you forget a word because you can always figure out a way to describe it. Um, so we're almost out of time, but let's see. So was there any new vocabulary in this lesson that you learned um, that maybe you didn't know before this lesson? Yes, I learned rat, dusk. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's new to words from this lesson. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So dust and um, what was the other one, Ksenia? And rut. Oh, rut. Um, rut. Rut is a, yeah, that's kind of a strange word to describe, but a rut um, can be like... We have it a lot in our snow road, uh, to rut for car moving. It's very difficult in the snow today. Right. A rut is usually like a... Um, kaliya. In, okay. in, the, in the Russian, it's what kaliya. Rut. If a rut is too deep, it is dangerous, so you can get stuck with right. your car. Yes. Yes. Right. So like a rut is like a something in the ground, and you can get stuck. Um, we actually say that if, if someone's having difficulties and someone's having problems, Sometimes we can say, oh, I am so stuck in a rut. Um, and that's an, a, an expression we have, in a rut. Um, because like, if you're stuck in a rut, you, you can't get out. So sometimes if we're having problems, we say that. Um, anything else really quick? Any other new words you guys learned? Anything well, else? Uh, sorry, can you say that again? Uh, Fernando, I think you said something. Okay, you know, I mean, I just, I mean, it was just plumber. I mean, I, I, I didn't remember that word, so well, I didn't know that word actually. And well, uh, with the description, I, I, I got what, what it means, so it was nice. Yes. Right. Excellent. Right. So, like Fernando said, he couldn't. He like he knew um, the the concept of the word but he didn't know the word. But because Anatoly described it so well, he could understand what he was talking about. Okay. Um, and then, Andrew, did you learn any new vocabulary from this lesson, or did you already? Yes. Uh, dry erase marker. I right. didn't <laughs> know. Okay, so that I is... thought it was dust marker. Sorry, what was that? I thought it uh, was just a marker. Right, just a marker. Yeah, they're, they're different, and that's an important um, thing to know because if you go to the store and you say, I'm looking for markers, they might give you something like this. But if you say, I'm looking for dry erase markers, they'll show you something like this where you can write on a board. Okay, so very good, guys. Um, thank you for attending class. It was a lot of fun. And um, make sure to check out the other classes. Um, so, um, do any of you guys have any last minute questions or anything like that? No, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I will thank you much. Uh, thank you guys for attending.
Okay, bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you in some more classes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. <laughs> bye. bye.